Hello and good evening, good afternoon, good morning, uh, wherever you're at. Uh, welcome again to Bnei Baruch Kabbalah Education Center. We are in the fundamental course and uh, we're starting our fifth lesson tonight. Uh, good evening, Lema. How hello, are you? Moshe, how are you? Hello, friends. Hello, hello. And uh, maybe before we would say anything, um, uh, we're welcoming you to uh, join us in the chat. Uh, write your name, where are you from, um, say hello to each other, and um, we have, um, we divided our course, the, our fundamental course, to eight parts, and um, we started uh, our first three lessons with um, Kabbalah basics, which we went through really the basics of uh, Kabbalah, and the previous lesson uh, we started with um, what is reality. So I really hope that um, you enjoyed the lesson, the fourth lessons that came from the studio in San Francisco. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you have a lot of questions about perception reality, of reality. To, tonight we will continue and we will focus more on the intention. Um, and the intention is uh, really uh, one of the key fundamental of the understanding what Kabbalah is. Uh, but uh, maybe before, um, I know that, that we have already friends that uh, join us and wrote in the chat and uh, everybody is excited to join this lesson, so so are we. And uh, maybe let's uh, hear who is with us. Yes, absolutely. So we have uh, we have Elsie from Australia, says uh, good morning. Uh, we have Laura from Vancouver Island. Um, we have Australia. I believe it's uh, almost four in the morning. Yeah, it says well, uh, good morning. So I must have. Well. Yeah, I don't know exactly what time it is. Uh, Laura from Vancouver actually posted a question, which is uh, apparently she posted a question on the form, and she didn't see the, her question and uh, or any answer. So uh, I'm sure the moderators are working on it now to see if we can find a solution for her. Um, we have, uh, and um, if it's a question that related also to the lesson or to what we study until now, you can also post it here, and we will try to answer that um, also right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, we have uh, Elizabeth from Illinois. Elizabeth, actually, this is, I believe, uh, she just came in today. Apparently, she uh, was preparing herself, watched all the archived lesson. Uh, we have Bill from New York, we have Julian from Tacoma, Northman from Finland, uh, Nimat from Oakland, we have Aya from Victoria, British Columbia, we also have Laurel from Arizona, uh, we have uh, Roland, uh, he didn't say where he's from, Cher from Indonesia, and these are the friends who said hello so far. Okay, great. So, like I said... Uh, oh, uh, and also, uh, yes. we have, uh, sorry, Aaron from Riverside, Hello. and Tammy from uh, Austin, Texas, and these are the friend again. Okay. Eric from Michigan, did I say Eric from Michigan? Oh, these say are the friends no. that we have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So, yes, we see that we really have uh, students from all over the world, and uh, we should greet, you know, with uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's great. It's really nice. And um, like I said, today we have a very, really special lesson. I mean, uh, we're sp talking about intention. And um, in the previous lesson, um, we spoke about um, how this uh, perception of reality is uh, driven by um, this mechanism, by this program, uh, what um, Kabbal is defining as will to receive. Um, and that... Um, Kabbalah actually developed this uh, program, this perception, um, by developing this point in the heart. This point in the heart, uh, that's what really brings us here, uh, all of us, that um, in different ways we all came, you know, with a question, what's the meaning of my life? You know, what really are we doing here? And um, through that... Um, special desire that we, the Kabbalists are calling, um, actually Bala Sulam, defining it as the point in the heart. Um, and um, I think we talked about in one of the lessons that, um, you know, heart is, um, it's the entire desires and this point 
in, in the heart is um, this really desire that uh, pushing us to find something above all of the corporal desires, um, trying to find this meaning of life, and uh, really, you know, bring us um, here, you know, everybody in his own beautiful uh, path to find um, find this question, searching for this question, um, coming here to um, to the education center lessons courses, uh, finding Kabbalah in different ways, and uh, through this desire, uh, we uh, start developing um, a sense um, that what we calling intention. Um, this um, um, sense can be developed only with, um, you know, uh, this desire, this program that uh, um, rise above uh, all the other, all the other desires. So um, that's what we will um, touch today. Um, and again, if you have questions or anything, please uh, bring it to the chat. Uh, we really would like to hear from you, and we will have hopefully enough time. I know it's a really a uh, hard topic to um, to understand, um, but uh, let's try to um, try to kind of uh, put everything aside, whatever disturb us during the lesson. If there is any other technologies around you, uh, from phones, emails, and so on, and um, uh, this way we can really all come together and um, uh, create this um, place that we can all. Um, really try to understand it together, try to um, connect to this uh, lesson and um, um, find this point of um, uh, where where I can really develop this uh, sense. Uh, so the first um, uh, thing that we want to touch is really, um, really we want to understand with desire and intention. And uh, maybe with um, Nema, you want to... Um, yeah, um I mean, just want to add, uh, I mean, in our last lesson, uh, we've, we've learned that there's a program that's constantly running and constantly, uh, basically, constantly moving everything for us. And, and there's this intention, this program that is basically this program right now in our current state is this program that's, uh, that's in, in it for its self-benefit. So this is why we're perceiving the way we perceive and this is how, uh, you know, we're perceiving the world. So in, in your last lesson, also you guys talked about in creating a whole desire, a whole in, uh, way of perceiving reality. And this perception of reality is changing that, that intention. And today's lesson really kind of boils down to those components. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of break down these desires, the intention, and see how we can... Yeah, so maybe first, you know, let's... Um, um, what is intention, then? Intention is uh, something... I mean, on a, on a basic level, intention is the reason why we're doing anything. For You know, if, if you're doing something, there's intention behind it. It's not the action itself, or it's not... The action is independent of the intention. So the intention is the reason behind everything that we do. So if um, I see someone with a knife, you know, he could be a yeah. murderer, he could be, um, um, you know, a doctor or a surgeon that uh, performing now um, a very special surgery and saving life. Uh, it could be, um, I, I don't know, they invented the atomic uh, bomb, but it was invented actually initially not to, not for a bomb. It was yeah. To, is for um, for peaceful purposes. In fact, you know, all the stuff that you hear on the radio right now, all the political thing, is those same questions. What are you using this for? Why are you using this nuclear, um, you know, uh, whatever, atomic uh, facilities? So really, a doctor can be holding a knife and a criminal can be holding a knife. Uh, the, that's the action itself. But uh, the purpose, the use of, of, of that thing is completely different, which is the intention behind it. So a doctor might be cutting you, but to heal you, but on the other hand, a criminal might cut you to actually take your money. So it's not about the action, it's um, uh, really about, you know, what, what are your intentions behind yeah. it. Um, and um, the Kabbalist uh, really explaining us, I mean, we always, um, I think what you experienced already in the last four, uh, four lessons that we had, uh, we will always take you back to the source. We will always take you to, uh, our, you know, the Kabbalists that um, wrote about it, um, and uh, really to understand 
uh, what's what's intention and uh, uh, in Kabbalah and what's the difference between intentions and desires, uh, we want to take you back to um, um, our source, Kabbalah for the Student. Uh, if you still didn't purchase that, again, go to, back to the uh, go to the bookstore. Um, I think also there are some promotions over there. You can get some books and you know get more. If not, um, I believe we have this uh, link to download. Um, um, everything that we're reading right now. So we will go to Kabbalah for the Student, page uh, 566, preface to the wisdom of Kabbalah. Okay. Uh, the will to receive is the whole substance of creation from beginning to end. Thus all the creatures, all their innumerable instances and conducts that have appeared and that will appear are but measures and various denominations of the will to receive. Let me read it again. The will to receive is a whole substance of creation from beginning to end. Thus, all the creatures, all their innumerable instances and conduct that have appeared and that will appear are but measures and various denominations of the will to receive. Um, so, yes, so in Kabbalah, in fact, we referring to the will to receive as the only matter that was created, meaning that, um, uh, and we, we are not referring to it as, um, you know, bad or good, um, just as um, the, the will to receive, that, that's the only thing that creator created. Um, and really what's, uh, what's the difference is the level of intention behind it. Uh, the intention to receive or the intention to bestow. Um, and um, so there, there are only two ways to use the will to receive. Like I said, either, and, and that's how, you know, the Kabbalah is defining it. Um, you know, how how we are using those desires. How do I use this will to receive? And what's the intention behind it? And uh, we will talk more about it, but maybe uh, Lema can also uh, draw that a little bit so we will have a better understanding because really this is the key about um, how Kabbalah, you know, explains our action and our intention and, um, you know, how we can really reach uh, spirituality. I mean, basically, as you said before, uh, the creature, we always depicted as a kli, as a vessel, or it's called, it's called kli, and, and there's the light, which is a pleasure. And basically, we want to take in the pleasure into the cleat. So this is an intention. Uh, let me see if I can maybe write it a little bit clearer. This is an intention which is in order... To receive. This is an intention in order to receive for ourselves. This is a desire to receive. Or okay. So basically, this is what we have. This is the intention. Our current intention is basically to take on the light. We want the pleasure. That's why every actions that we take, everything that we're doing, if you kind of start peeling. Uh, all the uh, things that we kind of covered it, and you realize at the end of the day, really what we want from all the actions that we're taking is to receive this pleasure. And this is what how it's depicted. But uh, Moshe also the, explained the other intention, which is the intention in order to bestow. So intention, this is the second aspect, in order to bestow. In order to bestow. Basically, we're going to explain it and we're going to dive into this more clearly and, and, uh, as we go along. But here, I'm not sure you're probably going to elaborate on this. So this is what we're going to call a masa. And, and, and again, we're going to be uh, talking about this. So instead of really taking in the pleasure, this masa will help us determine how much of it will be received in order to bestow and the other percentage will be 
reflected back. So this is an intention in order to bestow, and this is how it's depicted. But again, uh, as we progress in this lesson, this will be a little bit more clear, and uh, we're going to dive into it, and, and also in the coming few lessons as well. We This is really the essence of everything that we... Right, and, and Masach is a little bit, uh, you know, advanced, uh, what we are calling in, saying in Hebrew, Masach, it's a screen, we would touch it in a few minutes. Uh, but um, I wanted also to touch what's, um, what's the difference between uh, bestow and, and, you know, you're hearing it a lot and uh, it might be a little bit, um, I, I don't know, to say confusing, you know, when you compare it to, you know, like good deeds. Um, and um, we have, um, you know, we live in this world and we see that um, there are, you know, many people that are, are doing good deeds. Uh, you know, there was like an earthquake right now in um, in Nepal, and uh, we see many organization, you know, taking off their um, um, corporate life, taking uh, time off, and going over there and you know helping without in any pay or anything. Um, so is that really bestow? Um, so that what the Kabbalist really explaining is that um, um, we the intention, I, and we I want to touch a little bit about the intention to receive because. Uh, what it does, it really, this program, will to receive, and the intention behind it is that our intention is, you know, it's always to self-benefit. What does it mean? That, you know, our perception of reality is really narrow. When we, um, having this intention of the will to receive, that um, everything is for self-benefit. So if I'm using those lenses that... Uh, uh, all my intention behind it. And, and this is the way, again, I mean, if you remember what I was saying before, it's, we're not looking at that as, you know, bad or good. You know, that's how we were created. Um, and, um, we just want you to understand really the difference between, um, what is really bestowed that, uh, this is the quality of creator. It's unconditional love, unconditional giving that, uh, without getting anything for, for yourself um, and um, and how we do that. So uh, really to, uh, to understand it, again, I, we want you to understand uh, the difference between good deeds and, and bestow. So when I wear those lenses um, of um, the, 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 with this intention of will to receive, you know, my perception of reality is, you know, is really narrow. That's really what I can see. And that's that's the program that moves me all the time. This is the mechanism that uh, moves me all the time. And Bala Sulam also uh, write on it, um, uh, and I'm sure that also in the previous lesson, you know, we kind of explained a little bit deeper about, you know, this whole mechanism, how our will to receive um, um, what we see outside, the reality that we see outside is really I inside us. This is what we reflect outside is all with those lenses of uh, this will to receive. So, um, Bala Sulam writes more about it um, on Kabbalah for the Student. Again, we will take you back to one of the articles. It's called The Peace on page 268. Um, let's read from it. Lema will yeah. read us this uh, part. And also, actually, I just want to... I believe there's a question in terms of the last uh, reading that we've done. This is Kabbalah from, for the Student, page 566. So... The That's, previous one. We yeah, know. the okay. previous one. So right now we're going to be reading from Kabbalah for the Student, page 268, the piece, again, page 268. When, for example, one moves one hand from their chair to the table, it is because one thinks that by putting his hand on the table, he will enjoy it more. If he did not think so, he would leave his hand on the chair for the rest of his life without moving at all. Yeah, and we have, we apologize. I mean, usually we have um, those excer excerpt on the screen. Uh, today we have some small technical problems, so hopefully we can um, we can fix it. But uh, if not, you know, again, try to go back to um, to get the book, and um, everything is in there. Um, so really, what's important? I mean, uh, that's also what Bala Sulam is saying that every move, every action that I'm doing, it have the intention of you know behind it of will to receive. I mean. Everything is for self-benefit. So even, you know, the way I'm moving right now, it's for mm -hmm. certain, in, there is certain intention behind it. Yeah, I mean, but let me ask you. I mean, I understand people, for example, I mean, I understand, like, one, what, what he's talking about. Yes, of course, I'm always trying to adjust to feel that ultimate 
pleasurable position. But there are actions that people take. Uh, for example, I mean, I, you've seen people sacri sacrificing themselves on behalf of others to save others, uh, putting, exposing not only themselves, their family to help others and so forth. Are these uh, any form? Is there a shred of bestowal in them? Is there something that? Uh, yeah, it's it's hard to um, y you know um, you know even some of us that even grew into um, certain tradition uh, religion uh, or you know good values at home. For example, you know um, I remember my parents that told me all the time you know if you see like an old lady you know help her to you know carry her stuff or help her whichever way you can and um, um, it's really hard to understand that there is always in any action that we are doing, any what we call in good deeds, um, there is always in it some shred of um, that it's for myself. I'm doing that. I'm, there is some self-benefit in it. Um, and um, I remember there were a few months ago, there, there was like a, um, a billionaire from San Francisco traveled all around the West Coast and... Um, he decided one day that uh, he wanted to give some money to, um, you know, to the people, and um, um, and he put, uh, you know, cash cash money in different places here in Los Angeles, also in San Francisco, and uh, advertised it all over the so, um, social media, and he saw, you know, people in hundreds going out and uh, trying to find uh, the money that uh, that he hide. So yes, I mean, it's a great thing that what he did. Um, you know, there was anything for him behind it? Um, you know, of course there was. I mean, um, you know, it could be fame. It could be, um, uh, you know, he wanted to feel righteous with himself. You know, I don't know, he made too much money. He wanted to give it away. Uh, you know, there are many examples of that that, uh, you know, I'm, I, I will have somebody, you know, crossing the street, an old lady or, or any of those who go to hospital and help. And, you know, that's... You know, my daughter does it, does it a lot. She's going to help in different places. Um, but again, what's behind it? I mean, what do I feel behind it? Do I have any feeling that I'm that I'm uh, righteous? I'm doing the right thing? Uh, any pleasure from it? Um, that's not what uh, Kabbalah refers to as a bestow. I mean, um, we're talking about a complete unconditional bestow that I don't have anything from myself. I don't get anything out of it. Um, and this is really hard to to understand, and uh, more than that is um, how we are doing that at all. How anything like that could be done? That because, like Bala Sulam is saying, in any action that I do, there is some self benefit behind it. Even moving my hand is saying um, that's the mechanism that uh, operates us. I mean, it's a whole program that, um, as Bala Sulam said, that, that what we had previously is that um, that's the only matter that was created. Um, so how from that we make this uh, change? Hmm. Okay. But in, in that example that yes. you gave, for example, this billionaire mm -hmm. hiding this money and advertising and stuff, and I can see also that, okay, that person obviously had, uh, you know, he has some, I can see the rewards that he can get. I mean, just the mere fact that he put his name in the newspaper, the mere fact that People are mentioning, we're talking about him right now. All these are something that we, you know, we get this benefit. Um, but I guess one thing that's always kind of confusing to students, and, and it's always kind of confusing, is, uh, you know, the question that always arises, what if, what if I, that person did that? Uh, or at least, let's say, he just write a check or not even a check, uh, uh, you know, stuff some uh, cash and send it to a family that really, really needs it, doesn't give them their name, doesn't now anonymously provide that, uh, that help to that family. So the question initially says, well, nobody knew, so he's not getting any reward. But at the end of the day, he is get, he's feeling good. So that's the reward. That's the pleasure that he's getting out of it. Is that right. right. Yes, I mean, we... You know, everything is being perceived in your vessel, with your five senses. Um, so, um, so again, I mean, do you get any self-benefit of, of that? I mean, do you feel anything out of it? Um, and, the, and again, the question, I mean, I can move my hand, you know, with, you know, like the example that we gave in the beginning, you know, with the doctor, with, you know, I have a knife in my hand. So, you know, what's the intention behind moving my hand with the knife? Do I, you know, am I going to kill someone with that right now, or I'm going to, um, I don't know, 
cut the meat or do a um, surgery. And, uh, and what do I get from it? This is really the most important part. But uh, there are, you know, many different levels of intention. And, uh, of course, we cannot, you know, we, right now what we're trying to explain is, you know, really the difference. It's not that, you know, from now on I'm going to, all my intention, I can change them. Uh, I cannot change them. And through the course we will um, teach how we can use the intention, how we can change the intention. We will talk about it also in this lesson. Uh, so let's go back again to the source. Um, and um, let's um, hear, um, Lema will read us again. Um, I believe this is uh, page 247. Uh, it's called Matan Torah. Uh, it's the giving of the Torah. And um, again, Bala Sulam, let's, um, let's get back to the source and um, hear how the Kabbalah is describing it. Okay. So, uh, uh, Kabbalah for the student, page 247. It is a natural law for any being that anything outside one's own body is regarded as unreal and empty. And any movement that a person makes to love another is performed with a reflected light and some reward that will eventually return to him and serve him for his own good. Thus, such an act cannot be considered love of another, because it is judged by its end. It is like rent that finally pays off. However, the act of renting is not considered love of another. But making any kind of movement only as a result of love for others without any spark of reflected light and no more for any kind of self-gratification in return is completely impossible by nature. This means that all the good deeds that they do, either toward their friends or toward their God, are not because of their love for others, but because of their love for themselves. And that is because it is completely natural. Thank you. Um, and uh, we have also a clip for you in a um, couple of minutes that uh, we want to we want to show you, and uh, which uh, again we will um, go again to the Kabbalist and we will hear how he explained, you know, really what's the difference between bestow and good deed. Um, but uh, I really want to be clear that you know Kabbalah doesn't you know say that you know good deeds are bad or you know don't do that right now. Um, as, as we try to expand from the first lesson, Kabbalah, you know, expand above this corporal life. Uh, Kabbalah talk about how we can reach spirituality. So, um, again, we are not saying, you know, don't do any physical action, don't do good deeds or anything like that, God forbid. Um, that's not what we're talking about. What we're really talking about is that through this desire that we're calling um, point in the heart, we can uh, we can develop that um, and we will attain it. I mean, which is really important. And uh, um, then we can really change our intention. Changing our intention, and, and when you at attain this uh, first level of uh, spirituality, it, it's actually called uh, masach, the screen that Lema drew over there. So. Um, if we can go back, do you have it on screen? No. Uh, or you can just draw the vessel and the screen? Yes. Now, this is really the key, and this is really where the difference between Kabbalah and, you know, ethic and, you know, any other religion that uh, really by changing your intention, are you receiving, and, and I, I hope all of us, all of you remember that, you know, when we draw that uh, vessel, this kli that Lema uh, drew right now, this half circle over there. And um, so are we getting all the light, all the pleasures um, in us, or actually we are putting the screen, this uh, line that was drawn over there, um, we're calling it masach, and we are giving it all back without anything for ourselves. Nothing would go into this person. Uh, so let's uh, see a short clip. And uh, if you have any questions until now, please post them on the chat. Uh, after the clip, we will try to answer a few of the questions. Please, let's watch the clip.
and I'm seeing an old man who needs help. Can I use this action to draw the light that reforms? It depends on you. If I'm using this action with an intention, good, great, judging by the intention, of course you can, judging by the intention, but if you help the old man cross the street and you're telling yourself, I'm so holy, I'm righteous, then you did the opposite thing, you understand? That's the question. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing something that has to do with religious customs or anything else. In humanity, you'll find millions of people who want to do good things, helping in hospitals and doing many things. They, they are doing good things in corporeality, but is the world really getting any better? No. Do they actually create something good? No, because the intention is what changes the world, not the action. The Creator doesn't need our actions, because we're making our actions as a result of our egoism. Are we really making actions in order to correct our hearts or not? That's the question. If we're talking about actions that are necessary to live, then I have to do them even without any intention. That's called necessities. Neither condemned nor praised, but if it's beyond necessities, our beastly necessities, then I shouldn't do it, because I'm ruining the world, I'm making actions in order to receive, and actually drawing away from spirituality and inviting troubles. Okay, um, so um, again, I just want to remind you, if you have um, any question related to this lesson or to the lessons that we uh, taught until now, uh, please uh, write them on the chat and we will try to uh, give enough time for that. But um, uh, let's first of all, so, you know, get to, you know, really what's the connection between this new intention to um, the our perception uh, of spirituality. Yeah, it kind of goes back to to the last lesson and, and really basically one thing like anything else including spirituality we are going to perceive everything within the desire within this will to receive uh, so uh, right now as we've said uh, as the Kabbalists start telling us there's a, a whole reality and right now what we have is we we are perceiving based on this intention of receiving for the benefit of ourself so this is basically what we call this world. Okay, and these are my desires. As you can see, there's a whole reality, a whole upper world that we're not perceiving. Why? Because our perception is limited by this will to receive for ourselves. It's very limited. That's why I see separation. That's why I see uh, the things that I see right now. The separation, the pain, and the, the, the all the all the. I don't understand exactly what's going to happen next minute to another. Um, my my. I'm in constant chase of, of pleasures. Why? Because as we've said before, you know, we try to kind of, you know, take in the pleasure, and the, when the pleasure touches desire, kind of uh, dissipates. So I'm constantly chasing and chasing after one pleasure or another. So my perception of reality is very, very much limited. So, but once we start attaining, and once we start actually changing our intention then we will start unlocking more and more layers of the desires that uh, we are not currently feeling. And this layer of desire that we're going to unlock is a desire for collective soul of humanity. And this, this collective soul is what we call Adam Harishon. And basically, uh, we're going to touch up more on this today, but I'm sure in the coming lessons we're definitely going to dive into it more. Basically, humanity, there's only one collective soul that was created. And through a process of interaction between the light and the desire, this collective soul shattered. And basically, we see this current perception because of that shattering, this separation between, or the shattering within one soul. So basically, what we're doing is, as we are unlocking these different worlds, these layers of uh, 
of uh, desires that are not perceived and we're not perceiving right now, then we start reconstructing and really pulling back all the points, all the points together, and basically revealing or um, co connecting the desire and the soul together. So this is uh, the whole purpose. Maybe Moshe, you want to touch up on maybe explain a little bit more about Adam Harishon and the um, collective soul. Um, yes. Uh, um, well, first, um, and we will have a whole lesson about it. Um, you know, one really what is a soul and, and one soul. Uh, but really briefly to um, talk about uh, the soul of Adam Harishon and that's what was created um, and it was shatter and it's really hard to explain when we are you know we still in kind of the basic of Kabbalah and um, in this lesson we really more touching perception of reality but really to connect it to the perception of reality is that um, from creator side everything that was created was one soul um, and this one soul is one desire to adhere with creator to be like the creator to get all of the good and all the uh, everything that he was all the love and all everything that he was is planning for us uh, but in order to that each one of us will reach it each one of us really will feel it um, and um, get to this point where this uh, desire that we call it point in the heart will be developed there was a process that called the shattering the shattering is that this one soul, um, we also explain it as the 600,000 souls, which is more like a force. Uh, it's more of um, a quality that we can reach uh, together and we can really rebuild, I would say, even more, uh, with more strength, building this one soul. Uh, but that's a collective of each one of us um, desire, each one of us point in the heart, that we start developing and from that, we start developing the sense that we, what we're calling intention, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, but um, this shuddering really created this disconnection that we're all feeling. Um, and the, all, the whole purpose of this disconnection that we, more humanity, start feeling today, and especially today, that's why we see you know, students, especially now, like in this lesson, from all over the world, uh, that coming with this uh, question, you know, what's the purpose of of my life, what's, uh, you know, what we're doing here, trying to, you know, find those answers. And um, so the, the whole process of the shattering bringing us today that there are, you know, so many people that are asking that. And what um, Kabbalah will teach us, what this um, um, sense, this uh, uh, sixth sense that we are talking about will give us is to um, find this point of connection find, reconstruct this uh, soul in a higher level. We can uh, go to the uh, sources um, uh, from Rav Cook. I wish the whole of humanity can be placed into a single body so that I can embrace them all. Also, Baba Sulam, in his letter 4, he said, you lack nothing except to go out to the field that the Lord has blessed and collect all those facet organs that have dropped from your soul and join them into a single body. Um, okay, let's see. Do, do we have any any questions? Uh, so or far, it's, um, it's a tough um, lesson to. Um, um, and, and I know every time that um, I got uh, with uh, Dr. Rav Lightman to. Um, any of the lesson of, of perce you know, that he speaks about perception of reality and try to explain it, um, it's really hard to to understand it. And uh, you're not sure, you know, where you at that. I mean, is it really a dream? Is it really me? I mean, you know, who are those people around me? Why they are over there? Um, and um, and especially now that uh, we're talking about intention, I think. Um, um, and as I was saying in the beginning, intention is really the key in Kabbalah. Um, and, um, and and again, I mean, how are we really getting this intention? I mean, is really now getting this uh, cup in my hand. Um, you know, how can I control the intention behind it? How can I really do anything, any action without having any self-benefit? Um, so... For example, drinking from this cup right now, I mean, that would be, you know, something that I do for myself. Yes, I would do for myself, but this is also 
you know, necessity. So we are not talking about, you know, anything that, um, you know, we kind of, you know, we need for our, our necessity, we need for our life. Um, and um, so we don't want you also to um, stop doing what you're doing, you know, whatever you're doing, it really doesn't, doesn't matter. We want to build above it. We want to build this, uh, um, this um, sense, this um, filter like we were, um, the Bala Sulam is talking about, that uh, everything that really we perceive, it's in our five senses. There is nothing else. Um, as Bala Sulam explained, that the only thing that was created is this will to receive. So there is nothing else that I would perceive reality with. Um, now, the question is, uh, you know, what I'm perceiving right now, how do I know that this is, you know, spirituality? How do I know that I'm doing anything without self-benefit? Um, so through the study, we will build, you know, other five sen senses, uh, which we're calling them Keter, Chochmah, Bina, Zeranpin, and Malchut. Um, uh, and I'm sure Aaron will have a question on that, uh, but uh, which is fine. And um, all of those five senses together, this is the sixth sense that we're talking about. So you, we start developing based on our five senses. We're developing spiritual senses, spiritual desires. We really don't know what they are right now. We cannot really, you know, explain them or talk about them. But when you start attaining, you will start feeling them. That that once you have those five senses, those new five senses, then you see reality in a complete different um, um, glasses, in complete different, um, in, in a really wide. You will be able to see what's going to happen, how it's going to happen. You will understand the cause of everything that happened. But what we're giving you right now is the tools, you know, how to reach and, and get this, uh, um, those five senses that they are actually one. Okay. Uh, yeah, actually, we have a question from uh, 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 from the uh, Grace Pearls from Auckland. So when I'm when I begin to intend properly with no interest for myself, the result for me will be greater connection with humanity. Um, yes. The, again, the question is. Um, you know, how can I really change my nature? Because my nature, as uh, Bala Sulaim explaining, that, you know, this is really the mechanism, that th there is no action that it's not for self-benefit. So, so yes, once through the study, through all the tools that the Kabbalists are giving us, we will be able to um, change our intention. Um, and there are more factors, I mean, there are more tools that comes into that. We didn't talk much about them, um, you know, and of course one, uh, the only the only thing that can really make the change is creator. Whoever created that, he can make the change. Um, and, you know, that's what we're calling the light. The light can really ref make the, re you know, this reform of our intention, of this will to receive to will to bestow. Um, so we can do action to uh, tune ourselves to be like the light. And we, we have, you know, we have, um, how many more lessons? Fifteen more lessons. Mm -hmm. That we will, uh, uh, a lot of them we will touch about it. And um, this is really a good question, Nimet. And uh, I think it's, we saw you also in the previous uh, course. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's great. And um, this is really the key. That, uh, yes, once we m be able to make the change with of course, the help of the light, um, we will see ourselves connected. Uh, yeah, all, all our reality would, I mean, the reality, whatever we, you know, there is existing right now, exists. Um, our perception will change. Our, uh, yes, we will see more connection, we will see more love. Uh, we will talk more about it. It's a good question. Okay. Uh, from Elizabeth from Illinois. It seemed to me like the desire to put a puzzle back together, with each one of us being a piece in that puzzle. Is that, is that how you describe it? Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a good uh, description. I mean, uh, we're also using um, um, like a cogwheel. Um, you know, there is this uh, 
picture with all of the uh, Kaguis that works together. And uh, really the key is that um, we will go, get to a certain force, um, and it's not about, you know, how many people, but, you know, a certain mass that uh, all of us, are in, uh, the intention behind it will be to, to bestow. Um, and, um, and from that, yes, I mean, we will put together, re like I said before, reconstruct the soul, but in a higher level, because all of us coming right now from, um, and the only thing we have, this spark, this point in the heart, um, originated from this one soul, and by putting it all together, we will be able to reach even a higher degree. Um, and it, it's a whole lesson by itself, because, um, you know, it's also to, you know, the, the next question, if there was a soul that was created and everything was good, why it has to be shattered, and, uh, you know, why we have to put all the effort and work so hard right now to, like you saying, putting the puzzle together. Um, so th those are good questions, and we will talk more about them, you know, throughout uh, the lesson, throughout this course, and um, have better understanding on it. Okay. Uh, William from uh, Fort Worth, Texas. He says, is it possible to receive in order to bestow? Um, that's um, that's the ultimate goal, actually. Um, Kabbalah in Hebrew, if we translate it, it's um, receiving. You know, so what Kabbalah will teach us is how to how to receive. So, um, so that, there are a few stages. Um, you know, the first stage right now is that first of all, we need to first recognize that we are will to receive. Do, do we really understand that we are just will to receive, that every action that we will do will be for self-benefit? Uh, I'm not sure if we, you know, get, we even get, got to that stage. Uh, and this is, um, you know, the first stage in, uh, that, you know, the Kabbalists are explaining us. Um, and uh, I think if we, each one of us will do more scrutiny and ask, ask ourselves, um, do we really feel it, that every action that we do is for ourselves? Um, I don't think so. Um, I, I don't think we, and, and again, it's not in. A, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I mean, it's uh, we need to. There are three stages that we need to to get one, to get to them. And one is the we need to understand that uh, this vessel is all will to receive, and then make the change, make this in, um, uh, change the intention on it, and um, and then change it to bestow. But really, the the qualities of what creator want us to reach is to um, receive everything that um, that uh, he gave us. Um, just kind of also to really yeah. reinforce what you're talking about, Joyce from Florida, she's saying, are you saying, for example, there are ways to donate to help the victims of the earthquake in Nepal, but is it selfish intent to donate? Um, no, and that's why I know that uh, also on the clip, um, uh, Rav Lightman uh, kind of more, you know, emphasized more about it, and uh, it sounds like, uh, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that, maybe I, I'm harming somebody. Um, but uh, we really, what we're saying here in the education center, and in this course especially, um, th don't change any, anything that of, of what you're doing right now. And uh, if right now, you know, we need to help... Um, those people in Nepal, in Nepal, or anywhere else in around the world, or your neighbor, or your friend that um, needs some help, or any of those. I mean, all, any of the good deeds. Um, you know, let's put them aside. Uh, you know, if the way I was raised, and you know, my tradition or my conscience right now is to help others, that, that's a good thing to do. Um, we are not saying don't do that. Um, what we're saying is that we want to speak above it. We want to really reach above it and, um, and then do the kind of the scrutiny above that. What is the intention? Uh, and really focus on the intention because the, what Kabbalah speaks, Kabbalah speaks about the intention. Kabbalah doesn't, doesn't talk about our physical action. Um, and uh, this is really the key. This is really what makes the difference between Kabbalah to any other, other belief, any other you know, ethics or, or so on. So really what's important right now is, you know, let's put aside what we're doing. Whatever we do, let's continue doing that. And slowly we will build in, you know, we, our intention will change 
on our whatever the action. I mean, because intention is built on actions. But um, um, we need to focus on the intention. This is really the key. That's what we're trying to teach you in this lesson. Yeah, and I think it's very important that we really need to emphasize this uh, per, this perception of uh, bestowal. This this is something that we need to attain. It's not something like an ethics, like Moshe said. It's something that we acquire. It's something not acquire, but actually attain uh, through this process of uh, of studies and interactions. Yeah, and and I think we um, you know we talked. Um, I think it was the first or. Second lesson, we spoke about them, you know, really what does it mean, you know, attaining. And um, um, really we cannot change our lenses. We cannot put, you know, glasses of bestow or, you know, glasses of intention uh, of, uh, of bestow without attaining. So the first, first step is where, you know, we, the, you know, that we all came with the same desire. We all came here with this, uh, what we call in the point in the heart. And from that, we will start developing. So we need to develop this point in the heart. We need to develop this desire towards spirituality, um, trying to answer those questions, you know, the meaning of life. And through that, we will, you know, we will build together. We will develop this sense uh, of intention. So it's, it's a, you know, a process that we have to work with. We have to work with the tools that the Kabbalists gave us. And... Um, but really what's important is that, um, you know, once we will attain it and um, the program that will help us attain it is this this tiny desire that we had that brought us over here, develop it, and through that we will be able to make this uh, change. Okay, so as a follow-up question to that, mm -hmm. Priscilla is from Mexico. How can I know if, if uh, how can I know I'm changing my intention and it's not my ego trying to trick me? Right. Well, that's um, this is really good because our ego will trick us, um, and that's a you know a beautiful thing. And we need to really rec you know if we recognize it's already a good stage uh, that our ego is tricking us because it would trick us all the time, which is okay. Uh, you know that's uh, we were created like that, and um, so first of all, you know w once you attain it, you will know it for sure. Uh, you you would you know you attain it so there is no mistakes about it but um, um, the again the process of what Kabbalah will give us is you know all the tools throughout this course what we will get is really to learn how to work with this ego um, and uh, you know we are not tricking you know the ego would I know using kind of the ego would trick us so we just need to recognize really what is the ego you know what how does the ego work, and um, and then work on changing this intention behind it. Michael from uh, San Francisco. Eastern wisdom teaches to see through the mind-made self and realize total connection and oneness in consciousness. It is a direct experience. Does Kabbalah points to a similar breakthrough? How is it different exactly? Um, so I, I'm not really expert on um, you know any Eastern belief or anything like that. I can really speak about uh, you know what um, what is Kabbalah. Um, at least from what I understand or I heard is that um, in a way um, you know once we put um, and I think I think the, like you said the previous question was you know really good because. Um, you know, we feel now that the ego is tricking us. So once I, I don't have the ego, I'm putting it aside, um, then it's easy. But uh, can I really live without the ego? The ego is everything. I mean, that's what moves me. That's what makes me a, really who I am. Um, so if really, you know, if I want to, you know, live somewhere, I don't know, I don't want to say up in the mountain, over there in, in uh, Nepal or anywhere else, or here in the U.S. for um, and, and do the same thing, you know, meditation or whatever they believe. And I'm, I'm really not getting into it. I, I don't think we need to compare. Um, but um, really, the, what Kabbalah explained is that we are not supp suppressing the, our ego. That we are actually working with our ego because the ego is 
is everything. The, and, and that's what Baras Tulam is explaining us right now, is that um, we're building it above our desires. So we are using our desire, we're using our five senses, in order to reach spirituality. Um, according to the method of Kabbalah, you're, um, you're not putting your ego aside. Uh, the ego is actually the matter of, you know, of, crea- of creation. That was what was, what was created. And, uh, and with that, that actually will help us reach spirituality. So it's completely different than, you know, any other belief that, um, we're saying, you know, let's put our ego aside. Uh, you know, we all focus on one thing and uh, not using our desires. Kabbalah said the other way. You know, we, the goal is, is the will to receive, is to, um, get this complete fulfillment. Um, and um, get reaching to this complete fulfillment is using our um, our desires. Um, I think there was another question, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, Texas, if I'm not wrong, about uh, about our desires that uh, um, they are still there. Um, we are we are using them, and um, like I was saying, we're building new five senses: Keter, Chokma, Bina, Zerampin, and Malchut. And, and with, with them, we actually rising above, above that and um, getting all the fulfillment that Creator planned for us. Um, uh, I have another question from Nimat uh, from Oakland, which is a very interesting question to see. It says, she says, it seems, to, it seems so physically draining to continue to bestow. Is it rejuvenating? Is there, so that's a very interesting question for me. It is very interesting. Um, um, I think that it's, uh, and again, I mean, it's a matter of perception, of course, but uh, that's what the um, Kabbalists are teaching us, that, um, you know, once you reach this um, complete bestow, it, will be, a, it will, will be complete fulfillment, but how does it work together? Right now we're saying, you know, that uh, anything that you do, is there is a self-benefit behind it. So um, how a complete bestow would be a complete fulfillment also. Interesting question. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, I can tell you it's not draining, um, and you will find it uh, actually a maze. And it, it will be, um, I, I think that, uh, you, you know, once, once you learn how to get out from yourself and find uh, all of the joy and all of the love in the others, um, or I would put it the other way. Um, I, I don't know if you know any of the students um, here, you know, have kids. Um, you know, I'm sure some have kids. Um, but um, I think, um, um, have you saw a mom that uh, you know working so hard to feed her child and change his diapers and um, I don't know if the you know if he's um, he or she are sick or anything like that. Um, you know, once the child will just uh, make uh, a small move with his face that he's laughing a little bit, um, you know, she, you will see her f- fulfilled with joy and happiness. Um, I think somebody sent me a, um, a video clip um, showing, um, you know, a, a, a mom that just had like uh, four babies. And they're showing a picture that they're all laying around her and uh, each one of them is, you know, smiling from, you know, the, I know there were maybe a couple of months or so. And they're all, you know, smiling. And uh, and you see in her eyes, you know, the joy and how happy she is. Um, so this is really the only example that we can give from, you know, our corporal life. You know, really this relationship between mom and the child. So, I don't know, I never saw a mom that really, you know, putting so much effort into her child and she is not happy. Uh, from Elizabeth from Illinois, as we change, well, it kind of relates to the last lesson, but as we change our own nature and reach higher and higher levels, do we raise the spiritual level of all of humankind or mankind? Read it again, sorry. As we change our own nature okay. and reach higher and higher levels, do we raise the spiritual level of all of mankind? So we are 
we are not changing our our own nature. I mean, you cannot change your nature. That's how it was created. So what we that's what Kabbalah is talking about. We are uh, changing the intention behind it. Um, the what was created is this will to receive, and um, and uh, with that, what uh, was the question? And so, if, uh, just reaching a higher level of spiritual level, that's uh, that's what she's saying. If she reaches a higher level of spiritual level, does she also bring uh, the spiritual level of all humankind? Okay, so yeah, this is a this is a really good question because it, pretty much what you're saying, if you know, if um, I will make any change in me. You know, then outside the reality will change. Um, then humanity will change. I mean, the, they will, the humanity will feel um, the new level of uh, spirituality. Um, that's what the Kabbalists are teaching us. Yes, that um, when when we will make this uh, change in us, and um, and, and I, I'm not sure if in the previous lesson we taught it already or not, but uh, for sure we will get to it more in. Um, Upcoming lessons is that um, um, what the what Kabbalists are teaching us is that everything is in us. So all of those uh, desires, all of those uh, pieces from the broken um, one soul, Adam Arishon, that Lema was expanding and drawing, um, they are all in us. So we are actually correcting the pieces in us by correcting them outside. So, yes, I mean, once we make this uh, correction, what we call in correction, is, and we, we're just talking about changing the intention on it, and I know it sounds simple, but it's not that simple. Um, yes, the whole humanity uh, will, uh, will change. Um, Maureen from Vermont. Isn't the goal to get closer to the eternal by changing our mindset to that of the Creator? This is not for our gain, but to be in the right relationship with the eternal. Is that the goal? Again. Again. Isn't the goal to get closer to the eternal by changing our mindset to that of the Creator? To get closer to the Creator by changing ourselves, getting closer to the Creator. Yes, but uh, how do you change your mindset? Um, if you have an answer, I would be very happy to hear. Um, I mean, the whole society around, around us, the whole environment around us, teaching us, you know, like something completely different. Um, no, nobody is doing anything if, you know, is not doing that for himself. Not just for himself, is even worse than that, you know, to harm the others. Um, so where I will, you know, where I can change my mindset? I cannot, you know, go to... Um, to walk and uh, um, you know people over there will tell me you know how great is this uh, goal of reaching uh, the quality of creator reaching the quality of bestow um, you won't find people talking about it you won't f find people thinking about it most humanity actually thinking about you know what the, what the best I can do for myself and and again I'm, we are not saying that in a bad way um, but few unique people like you that, you know, found this uh, education center, found Kabbalah, because you came with this question, where this question came to you. You know, what's the purpose of my life? So, with that question, like, I, like we said in the beginning, with that program that was created, this uh, um, w uh, point in the heart, this desire, with that program we developed this Sixth sense. We're developing this intention, and with this intention, we can make this change in in our mindset, uh, uh, in 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 us. And, I mean, we can really make the change. So we need we need an environment. We will have, I believe, the next couple of lessons. Third, I, I don't remember exactly. I can look at that. We will talk about the environment because right now my environment around me telling me completely different. Um, uh, different thing, so I, I cannot change my mind, my mindset, and um, really the only way to do that is not getting inside me, is working with um, what I see outside of me. By working with the with the others, um, I can make the change um, change in me. Okay, uh, Maureen from Vermont. 
Uh, well, no, actually, you know what? She just asked that question. So, uh, Joyce, actually, from Florida, mm -hmm. she asks, so to help is okay, but to boast of the help given is a bad intent. So, so to give is okay, but to boast about it, to, uh, that's the bad intention? Um, no. It's, it, that's not the... Um, it's really what you gaining in you. It's not about, you know, uh, that I will do an action and I will go and tell someone or, you know, I will not tell anyone. Uh, it really doesn't make a difference. It's, um, the question is, this will to receive, this mechanism that uh, program you, that operates you, um, what does it, that, does it get any self-benefit out of it? That's, that's the question. Um, so, Again, I mean, I, I, I don't want you to, I know it's hard and I know, you know, it brings a lot of questions and, uh, you know, some of us maybe was raised, you know, a different way that, you know, this is, um, you know, good things to do and we're saying it's a good thing to do. Don't stop of doing that. Um, it's just really, you know, looking at that from a different perspective now, looking at that from um, uh, trying to understand, like um, one of the students uh, was asking, I think, um, uh, you know, if um, uh, if there is a, um, you know, if you can receive in order to bestow. So, what what really we need to look at right now is more of um, kind of you know going from a little bit outside from ourselves, um, and what will help us to go out a little bit from ourselves and looking on ourselves from the side is this uh, uh, point in the heart that we're calling up. Calling, uh, this desire that brought us over here, and with this desire, you know, kind of, okay, I'm looking at my, myself outside, Moshe, and what are my actions, and what's the intention behind it. That's the only thing we need to do right now. We don't need to stop of doing any actions, uh, but um, this point in the heart will help us to get out from, get out from ourself, and... Um, you know, and we are not crazy. It, it's not like, you know, two people uh, or, you know, we have any mental issue or anything. Actually, the other way, we, you will see that those two things that, you know, this um, body that we see, those desires that we see in our corporal life compared to this point in the heart uh, will be able us to connect it together and find this um, line of um, creator and bestow. Okay. You kind of answered it, but uh, I don't know if you want to add anything to this. But Elsie from Australia, she said, I'm, I am lost. Please tell me what my intention should be and doing things without self-interest. Certainly, when I pick up a herd dog or person, whatever, from the road, uh, so he won't be harmed even more. I'm doing that without even thinking. There's no time to even think, so... Right, exactly. I mean, um, that's this is the mechanism that operate us. I mean, that because it, again, and I know that this lesson brings a lot of question. I mean, uh, or, you know, especially you know people that are used to do good deeds, and it brings a lot of question and doubts. And you know, how come you know you're saying such thing? Uh, and the only reason we're saying that because we really want you to understand the difference between a complete bestow that there is nothing that the will to receive is getting. So it's not about um, this uh, nice uh, student from Australia. Elsie. Elsie. Mm -hmm. um, or about Moshe or about Lema. You know, we are not right now judging anyone. We are just saying, like I said before in the previous question, uh, answer, is, you know, go outside from yourself with these la new lenses that we're getting now, with this desire, and let's really see if there is any any self benefit um, now again I don't want you to you know guys to get up from this lesson and saying you know okay now everything that I would do I want to start judging it no uh, we want you to understand the difference between that and we want to give you also tools throughout the course how we actually changing this intention uh, and uh, or how we using I would say it in a better way. How are we using every action that we do to put in a, 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 the intention on it? Elizabeth from Illinois, 
I kind of reinforced what you said. By this, I'm learning to keep an eye on my own intentions and motives instead of judging the motives of others. Exactly. Okay. Um, yes, exactly. And, and that's also, um, it's a really good point what you, br what you brought right now because it's also related then when we study um, about the one soul, um, what Lema touched a little bit, Adam Arishon, is that um, whatever we see outside of us, and uh, we also learned a little bit about it in the previous lesson, is that uh, whatever we see outside in us, uh, outside of us, um, there is a mechanism in in us the, which which we call in the will to receive that actually project outside. So whatever I see outside is actually pieces in me. Um, so it's just you know let's look at it like that. It's you know creator put it around me to help me um, change my perception. That's it. And um, you know so. It doesn't mean that tomorrow I'm going to someone in the street or, you know, looking at a family member or a friend or anything like that and, you know, you're just somebody that I do an experiment on. And uh, we, 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 are not, we don't want you to change anything in your life. We just want to really start, you know, sensing, using those, this desire, understand that we have this special desire right now um, and how we can use it in order to reach spirituality. So spirituality, again, it, we are not talking about changing anything in our corporate reality. We are not changing our desire. We are not going to do any meditation. We are not going to, uh, you know, sit quietly and not talk for a month or whatever. We are going to use all our desires, and that's actually, and we are going to use all our ego, and we are going to use all the disconnection that we see right now, and all the disaster, and everything that happened. And we will see how that will really, really bring us into um, spirituality. Okay, Elsie also from Australia, but it was a continuation of the last question, but it kind of came in separately. But uh, And also she had another follow-up question, so I'm going to kind of put it together for you. So uh, continuing from the earlier question, she said there's no time to scrutinize, you know, seeing a dog or a person hurt on the side of the street. My ego or so there's no time to scrutinize my ego or intention. It is natural action without self-thought. If I have to scrutinize my intention and ego all the time, I might just confuse myself and end up doing anything at all. And she continues, I really don't think everyone out there are doing seemingly good things for others is because they benefit from it. Uh, Right, and, and uh, uh, she said, uh, okay. uh, "Better perform it." Did, did not God makes us uh, to serve one another naturally? Isn't that maybe the? Um, did God made us serve one another? Um, creates us so that we can serve one another. So maybe these people are doing it because naturally, without thinking, they're doing these good things because naturally they're inclined to. Right. And, th and that's what we said. I mean, uh, we said that, uh, I mean, first of all, don't change any, uh, any of the action. But on top of it, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, first of all, we don't know what other people intention. Uh, so we cannot really judge any, any of that. Um, and when we say that uh, um, any of the action that we're doing, including good deeds, have some self-benefit behind it, uh, we are not saying that in a bad way. And this is really important to understand. I mean, really what we're showing that, and if you remember the first lesson we said, we we want you to look at what we're teaching right now and what Kabbalah brings to you, this method, as a scientist. Okay, so really what, what we're doing right now is we are trying to understand really what how everything operates, how this whole mechanism, this program that we see around us, this reality, um, ourself, our desires, even our body, you know, you will see that in Kabbalah there are so many layers that you can uh, really see and uh, understand the cause of everything uh, and see, you know, really what's uh, planned ahead. Um, all of that is, um, that, that's really what Kabbalah will, will, uh, will bring you. So it's not about, you know, somebody will have a self-benefit of a good deed that he will do. It's about really understanding that the whole mechanism that operates us just move from this, what we're calling will to receive, from this intention 
to benefit something out of it. What is the something out of it? It could be just, you know, some sort of uh, feeling behind it, some sort of, uh, um, I don't know, a reward. It could be in um, some, you know, even belief saying that it could be in, you know, next life. Um, that's also a reward. You know, I, you know, we see that uh, there are people that are willing to die because they will get something, um, you know, afterward. Um, so, again, we are not judging it and we are not saying good or bad. We're just saying that this is what it is. This is the mechanism. Why, why are we explaining all of that? So we will understand really, really what is bestowed and what's, where we need to reach, where Creator want to bring us. Creator doesn't want to bring us to serve each other. Through serving each other, we will learn how to make the change in us, change the intention. That's something different. But the goal is completely different. The goal is that we we will receive and feel all the love and the good that Creator prepare for us. Okay, I know and we have one. Yeah, one more question. we have to uh, bring in Aaron on this from Riverside, California. He says the sefirot are internal senses. Are they different kinds of intentions? How do we develop the screen, or does it already exist? Um, yes, everything. I, I, um, I'm sure that you will bring it also to the next question, the next uh, lesson. Um, and uh, yes, everything is everything exists. We just need to find it in a way. Um, the sefirot that I was mentioning, it's um, it's that's the sense that we are developing, that we can develop. Only with the desire, um, this new desire that we all feeling now, this point in the heart. Uh, so through that, if you take the method that the Kabbalists left us and all the tools, you will be able to develop that sense that we calling it intention. This intention is made of developing those new. I mean, again, like we said, everything that we feel is in our five senses. So the new sense is de developed from this new five spiritual uh, desires. Uh, so we cannot continue. We're really running out of time. We don't want to push it too long. Uh, we still have 15 more lessons, and I'm sure that uh, you, we will see you in the next uh, lesson coming from the Studio in San Francisco. It's really great because now on the next lesson we really will touch a new part, which is the language of Kabbalah, um, and um, you will learn how to use it and how to... Um, touch all the books and uh, understand how the Kabbalists really explain um, all of this method. So with that, maybe I think we have a few announcements. Uh, when is the next lesson? Um, yeah, the next lesson will be uh, Sunday, uh, well, let's see, April, I'm sorry, uh, May 3rd, sorry. Uh, uh, just please take your unanswered question to the uh, student forum and the uh, uh, moderators and uh, instructors will be able to answer them and these are the alright so with that I hope that uh, you enjoyed the lesson and um, maybe we will come to our next lesson with intention to um, connect more and find uh, uh, and try to understand more of what this method that the Kabbalists left us so have a good night, good morning, good day um, and thank you again alright thank you, good night